Hi everybody, Karen Fabian here, founder of Bare Bones Yoga, and thanks for taking a minute to watch this YouTube video. So, um, if you followed my videos before, you know that I focus on anatomy, and I came out of a training that I did this weekend, and we were beginning to break down anatomy into its discrete parts, and this is always a fun process for me to start out with a new group and to start to dive into the subject of anatomy. Now I have a very specific way that I break anatomy down into its distinct parts so that it's much easier for yoga teachers to learn. And one of the things that we start out with is a conversation around what is anatomical position, what are the planes of the body, and what are anatomical movements. And this is a really important thing for yoga teachers to understand rather than just having them leverage what I like to call kind of yoga speak, things that yoga teachers say that they don't always exactly understand the rationale behind and or even the definition of. And so here what I wanted to do is just give you a quick primer and this may be something that you hear and you decide, oh I totally know that. Or maybe you hear some of the terms and you're a little unsure. That's always a good opportunity or a good sign to just go back and re-review that anatomy information so that you can really be sure when you're using these terms, you're using them correctly. Now the other thing I'll just mention is some of these terms are not literally going to be what you say in class. Some of them are a little more technical and not really common knowledge. So you probably wouldn't refer to them in class and other words, uh, other terms have uh, terms that we use as teachers. So I'll kind of share those as we go along the way. So the first thing to keep in mind is that anatomical position is this, which is very much, as you can imagine, very much like Tadasana or mountain pose, except very intentionally anatomical position has the feet at hip width. And AP is basically the position from which all the movements are described. And when I say movements, I mean movements that the joints make. Because keep in mind, as we move our body in space, we're able to do that because our muscles act upon joints, and as a result, limbs move. And so that's just kind of a really fundamental concept of, um, of anatomy and human movement and how the human movement system works. So having said that, anatomical position is this, and there's a whole bunch of ways that we can leverage anatomical position in our teaching. I'm not going to go into that here. I want you to just keep in mind in this position here, we begin to see and can begin to describe planes of the body. And when we think of planes of the body, what we're referring to is the imaginary space around the body within which these movements occur. So as I move my arms like this, I'm moving them in space. And we've actually defined that space as a particular plane of movement. If I move my leg like this, I'm moving in a different space, a different plane, and that plane is described differently as well. So let me tell you the planes of the body. So if I divide the body down the middle into a left and a right, that's a median um, plane. It's most commonly known as the sagittal plane. So sometimes people say, what's the difference between the median plane and the sagittal plane? Well, the median plane goes down the middle. The sagittal plane could be to the left or right of that. Now, if I divide a body, the body, into a left and a right, that gives me movements that happen in that plane. And these movements are known as flexion, moving forward in that plane, or extension, moving backward in that plane. So now if I take the body and I divide it into a front and a back by a line down here, then I get movements that occur in this plane, okay? So this would be movements of abduction, abduction, moving away from the midline, and adduction, moving towards the midline. And then if I divide the body into a top and a bottom, I get the transverse plane. The transverse plane is where rotational movements occur. So if I divide the body into a top and a bottom, and I'm looking at the body from the aerial view, I could see movements like this. 
So rotational movements occur in the um, transverse plane. So movements like external rotation or internal rotation. And then there are a couple of other just really specific terms. If I lean over to the side, even without my arms, if I just do this, that's considered lateral flexion of the spine. If I turn my palms forward, I supinate. If I turn them back, I pronate. Keep in mind my relationship to gravity might change, but the anatomical actions are the same. So if I'm here and my palms are supinated and I come down onto my back and my palms are the same direction, they're supinated also. If I stand up in anatomical position and my palms face back, that is pronation. If I now face the ground, that is pronation as well. And then the other uh, foot position that has its own term is pointing the toe is um, plantar flexion and flexing the foot, what we probably refer to as flexing the foot, is dorsiflexion. So just a quick review, and I'll kind of add in a little of kind of what we might hear in yoga class. If we are moving forward in the sagittal plane, it's flexion or extension is backward. If I'm moving out in the transverse plane, it's external rotation or open, opening, which might hear open your shoulders. If I turn back, that's medial or lateral, I'm sorry, medial or internal rotation in the transverse plane. If I'm moving away from the midline in the frontal plane, that is abduction, which you would probably never say in class. If I move in towards the midline, a movement happening in that frontal plane, dividing the body into a front and a back, that is a deduction. So those are just the general terms. And you can also think of movements of flexion as generally happening in the front, moving towards the front. So flexion of the hip, flexion of the shoulder, and extension movements occurring as a result of muscles that are in the back of the body or the posterior aspect of the body. So shoulder extension, hip extension. And then one last piece we'll just, I'll just share just to kind of button this all up, is that keep in mind in every yoga pose, there are many different anatomical movements happening. So for instance, if I come into dancer's pose, I would be externally rotating my shoulder, I would be moving my right hip into extension, I would have my right knee in flexion, I would have my right foot in pl uh, uh, <laughs> plantar flexion, I would have my left hip in mild extension and my left knee in extension. Uh, I would have my right shoulder in external rotation, right, because you don't want people to do it with their shoulder internally rotated. Uh, another example would be if I come into warrior two, sometimes this is a little bit harder to, to get a sense of. This hip though is in external rotation while this one is in internal. And if you're confused, think about it. If you thought maybe this hip was an internal rotation, you could take that action in an extreme way and you can see here you wouldn't want your front hip to be in internal rotation. So here this hip is in a bit of external and this hip is in a bit of internal rotation. Now one last, last thing I'll say about that is that keep in mind when we look at joint actions, they're measured in a range of motion. They're measured in degrees. You can think of a protractor. In this case, we don't measure angles in the body with a protractor. We do it with a goniometer, which is essentially a protractor to measure how much range we have at each joint. And because it's a range, we can see and experience in our bodies when we do yoga poses, different degrees or different ranges of motion at different joints. So if I come into a yogi squat, you can see I have a very open hip shape. So I have a lot of external rotation here. But when I come into warrior two, that same hip you might not think has as much, although it is pretty similar, right? So again, just keeping in mind, there are different degrees of expression of these movements. However, it doesn't mean the movement is something different. So we wouldn't say, oh, this doesn't seem like it's super open, so it's not external rotation anymore. It probably just is not as much as we could potentially do. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have found it helpful. 
Keep in mind, if you have any questions, you can DM me on Instagram, Bare Bones Yoga, or leave a comment here on this video. So thank you so much, so, so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video here on my YouTube channel. Namaste.